Well, Sebastian, thanks so much for your time today. It's a very exciting time for Accor. We were just saying before, you've gone from four or five brands 20 years ago to 30 now. 38. But a great collection. 38, 38 brands 38 and now. counting, yeah. A great collection, though. It's a very curated collection of brands, I'd like to say. Well, I hope you're right. It's been, we've been very draconian in terms of actually what are the brands we missed, which segments, which geography, what promise to be fulfilled. Uh, so there's only one brand we haven't kept. Uh, it's called Atom. Atom is based in Chile, Peru, Colombia, only seven of them, and not enough depth in the brand, so we placed it by Pullman and the yeah. If you look at this, I mean, you do an amazing job at something, I think, in the industry, is when you do deals with these brands, you keep the brand founders on board. Ten years ago, you'd buy the brand, they'd be left to the side, and then you'd rebrand the hotels, but you keep these guys and girls in the business. Well, I'll tell you why. It's, uh, had we been able to invent those brands and those promises, we would have no reason to buy them. Uh, but they're being invented by humans, they are super smart, they've seen something we haven't seen. So coming along with the brands is who is behind the brand. Every brand has a soul. Yeah. That soul is from someone. So if they could actually stay on board with us, it's for the better, for them and for us. So no. And culturally, it is a huge help to being enriched by so many new talents. Femme and Raffle is a good example. We kept everybody in Toronto and they are super good. And you look at those brands, when you integrate those into your company, obviously everything adds something, doesn't it? It, it adds culture, like you were saying yesterday. Well, it, uh, yeah, it adds depth, it adds uh, strengths, it adds uh, a new service to a client, uh, it adds diversity, uh, it adds retention. So, it, you know, which is what I told you, it's, uh, I was trying to fill some holes. Uh, we were not strong enough in New Zealand and Australia, so Mantra was a perfect fit for us. Uh, I was looking for somebody very much game reserve, uh, eco-friendly, sustainable development, sub-South Africa, Mentis came along. Looking for something which was all-inclusive, going from Mediterranean, Turkey, all the way to Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Rixos is part of it. Yeah. Then trying to get into the US market, which is the most difficult market to enter because it is in the hands of hard guys. But through SBE, Delano, SLS, Mondrian, Sam Nazarian, who's a hell of a CEO, yeah, yeah. You, finally, you finally tap in in the four biggest market, which is Los Angeles, Vegas, Miami, New York. And then 21 seeds, a niche museum brand. So I could, uh, uh, the, the fascinating things about it, as much as I'm telling you we've been looking for them, many of those brands, I uh, probably should not tell that with you on TV, but I, I did not even know of their existence. Yeah. Uh, but they're super popular super well known locally but me in Paris I lost track of them yeah so it's them calling us as much as us calling them now we talked about this last year in terms of what you've done uh, from a loyalty standpoint you've just launched ALL or yep. all, and which is very limitless. exciting tell us about that and, and how that works from within the company well it's uh, it's a reshift of the way we think it is not a new loyalty program it's a new lifestyle loyalty program which has a lot of promises uh, it is basically a matter of today Entering in your day to day life, whether you work, you live, you play, uh, hopefully you're going to have Accor top of mind with Accor Live Limitless, yeah. in which you're going to have the ability to burn and earn points. Whether you're going to go to one fine stay or co working with next door or using concierge, digital concierge, yeah. Jean Paul, whether you go to Mantis or you go to SB and access to 10,000 restaurants of Accor, even if you're not going to be staying with us. Yeah. So it's really getting into the whole travel. Uh, universe uh, in which ACO should be off service to you wherever you are, any time of the day. So it's, it's a pretty interesting way of overreaching on one premise. And I'm, I'm stuck on this one. 99% of existing loyalty, loyalty card members only use their card when they travel to the brand. Yeah. So you use a Marriott card when you go to Marriott and ACO and Hilton. None of us think of using their, using their card when you're not traveling, yeah. when you stay home. Why can't you? Even at home, you have some Akko hotel next to you in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. But you never thought of using your card. You only use it when you go to New York, yeah. when you go to Paris. That's nonsense. Yeah, obviously, um, the new generation of smartphones that we see from companies like Apple and Samsung make it a bit easier, because otherwise your wallet used to be like a George Costanza size yeah. wallet with all the hotel well, don't cards. Worry, my you my card's going to be on your, on, on your mobile app, so you don't have to have a plastic app. Yeah. However, a lot of people actually want to see the card and hold it, which is kind of a bizarre thing, but I guess yeah. so, so we still print the card. You've, you've, you've launched a couple of new membership tiers, a very secretive club, the, the black tier. What's it's, all this about? It's not secretive. Uh, we, we launched, we signed three partnerships. One, yeah. actually, let's go back to second. Loyalty members told us, 38,000 of them, we've made a survey. What are the three passions that you would like 
hotel company to fulfill and basically to give them as basically money cannot buy. One of them was culinary, food tasting. So we've done a deal with IMG, which is the largest taste festival in many countries, uh, and offering you basically cooking right. lessons and so forth. Done a deal with AEG, financials company, concert organizer, 60,000 venues in 70 concerts. And then the last is sports. Yeah. And it's sports. We're a French company. We wanted to be visible, notorious. We wanted to be known probably more rapidly than we could have been without a sponsorship and decided to go with Paris Saint-Germain Football Club yeah. and be the jersey sponsor. But much more than jersey sponsor, we're going to be all over basically experiences you can have in sports, yeah. okay, whether it is underprivileged, education, uh, hospitality, yeah. you name it. So, yeah, it is a bold, audacious move. But he makes us in the league of the big brand name that you know, the Coca-Cola, this yeah. of the world. And the exposure, like we, you said yesterday in your presentation, the exposure of what you get from being on the jersey of that club is hundreds of millions through social media and through TV and everything. Well, it's, it's a good point you're raising. What we've done so far, and probably too much of it, most of the marketing spend has been on blackboard at the airport in your, uh, in your towns or, or local newspapers yeah. or basically country TV magazines. We have to move away a bit from it by going into bloggers, influencers, social media. And Paris Saint Germain as a team, which was a bit unknown to me, uh, has 400 million followers on social networks. But more interesting than this, only 30% in Europe, 20% in Latin America, 25% in Asia Pacific, 20% yeah. in Middle East and Africa, which is precisely the market in which I call the leader. Yeah. So by going through Paris Saint Germain, am I really invading a lot of territories which I wanted to be present? And you can obviously partner with them on, on so many different levels as well, which is awesome. How do, you, how do you look at these partnerships? How do you do them? Is it you look at sort of what the reach could be potentially or is it the right partner? Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's those partnerships is one thing that people have to be paying attention to. They're only going to work if you have activations. So whenever a team, a Python team is going to be playing in Singapore or in Shenzhen, well, you'd better make sure that your team members in Shenzhen yeah. and Singapore really get to be aware of it yeah. and participate. Same thing with food tasting, same yeah. thing with concerts. So the right partner for me is the partner who understand that they have to make themselves available, welcoming, because yeah. we're going to be invading their space when they're going to be touring. Yeah. Uh, but it's people want to have an experience. So if you are a, if you're a Coldplay fanatic, music, you want to see the Coldplay band, you want to be able to shake hands, you want to be able to yeah. have an Instagram photo, you want to be able to go to them backstage. So that's what we're offering to yeah. our team members. Funny you say Coldplay, we were actually filming my TV show in Singapore and they were staying in the Sofitel with us at Centro, so right next okay. door. I didn't get the photo with, with them, but that would have been a lot of fun. I know what you mean. You well, you said the right hotel though. It was the right hotel, yeah. yeah. And you, you look at it and go, well, you're becoming an experiential company, not a hospitality company anymore. Well, we're moving from transactional, functional, product-minded to go client-minded, emotional, aspirational, money can't buy, because that's what people remember. You will never remember having a 20% discount. Yeah. You remember what somebody's done, to, like here in Berlin, you being able to go to the zoo, uh, had fun with pandas, which was not accessible. I don't know why I talk about the pandas and the zoo here in Berlin. <laughs> Uh, but we need to give you something that you want to talk about when you come back. And when you travel, what, what are some of the things that you really look for and what kind of experiences do you want to do when, when you've got your time off? Uh, I wish I would go more to museums, uh, street art. I love anything which is art. I love architecture. I don't do it enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I learn a lot about actually meeting the digital players, government officials, my owners, my investors, my clients my employees, which makes me fed and happy, but I'm missing the 10%, which is what I call intellectual. I need to know more about a culture, about a history, and I don't do it enough. I don't know why I'm talking to you again about this, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I need more time for myself. I, I ask that because like, the pleasure business right now is like the hottest segment yeah. in the world, and, and people are coming to conferences and taking two or three days off and exploring these cities. But you know, on, on this point, uh, what we, trying to push and we're going to be immensely successful. You happen to be going to Paris and there is a Van Gogh exhibitions on Wednesday. But I know you're coming on Tuesday and through my data with you, I know you're Van Gogh passionate. So I need to tell you when I know of your booking, probably 10 days, a month before, yeah. hey, why don't you please stay one day extra or could you push your meeting because on Wednesday night, we can get you at the Bangkok exhibitions and are you going to be leaving on Wednesday morning? Can yeah. you please refit your schedule? If you know about it, 
then you're very pleased that I guess we thought of it in your place and you may be rescheduling. That's what I want to do for you. Yeah. So it, it's a whole thing, it comes down to partnerships, doesn't it? In terms of what your teams around the world can achieve in their local markets. Well, par par yeah, partnerships, as you know, in our industry is, happens to be with five big industries. You have to do partnership with the credit card industry, with the telecom industry, with the airline industry, with the car rental industry, and the food retailer industry. Because you want your card to be used, you want your card to be simple. And, and our core, we have some time to catch up here. Yeah. We're being late in the game. Uh, and because one, we haven't thought about it. Two, because our program was not notorious enough. Yeah. Three, because maybe it was the wrong team. Four, because we don't have the technology. And five, my fault, that was probably not a priority of the upper management. Yeah. Well, now it is a priority. Now, before you became the CEO, you were obviously involved in the company. I mean, you obviously saw the potential well, before you became member. the CEO. Well, that's yeah, what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah. When you were a board member, you obviously saw the potential of what this company could do. Yeah, I saw it from the outside. I also saw that, I guess, this company was fragile. Uh, I, I've been loving this company ever since, so I have huge respect for the last 50 years. But it was time to wake up. Uh, it, it was time to really have better free cash flow, better sustainability, greater foundations, changing the culture, basically coping with a new ecosystem. And a new ecosystem, as you know better than I do, is all those big digital players, they are super strong. Uh, and I just met with the Expedia CEO, talking mm -hmm. Expedia, Booking, Google, Tencent, Alibaba, Kayak, TripAdvisor, there's 20 of them did not exist 20 years ago. Those were happy days yeah. in 1960, 2000. They exist, whether you like it or you don't. Cope with them, partner with them, grow with them, but be aware that they exist. And yeah. that's what we haven't done before. Obviously, travel's an exciting time. Uh, the air market's going to double in the next 15 years. From 4 million to 8 million travelers. And you need to have all the hotels in the right locations. Uh, I think we do. Uh, we are number one in Europe, number one in the Middle East, number one in Africa, number one in Latin America, number one in Asia Pacific. Only notable exceptions, United States of America and China. Yeah. Are we going to be number one in those two countries? I'm afraid the answer is no, because place is taken by local operators. But what matters the most is no longer countries. What matters the most is cities. You have a billion four travelers, 80% of the billion four end up in 320 cities. Yeah. So Melbourne matters, Perth matters, Bangkok and Singapore and Rome and Paris and Sao Paulo. Don't think countries because you may, you may make the right, the wrong assumptions. If yeah. you talk cities, ACO is present heavily in those 320 cities. Well, Sebastian, congratulations on the success so far and thank you so much for your time today. You're going to come back next year? I will. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks a lot. Bye. See you soon.